this is a video that I'm very excited to make because one, it's talking about a YouTuber, BJ, who I covered once in the past and I'm excited to get back into that situation, but it's also covering Sloan Hooks and Spill Sesh. I used to be sort of a fan of both of them. I watched their content for probably about a year, a year and a half, like religiously. When they would upload, I would be one of the first to be clicking on it. But after a while, I started noticing the inconsistencies and a lot of the problematic, hypocritical behavior that they have both shared. And Dustin Daly is calling it out, and I am just living for it. I have a lot of thoughts and opinions that I'm excited to share throughout this video, but Dustin had a lot of opinions that he was sharing in his, so I'm going to be playing his and then just kind of reacting to it and adding mine. With that said, let's just dive into it, and the video starts with sweet little Adam McIntyre. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure I saw Sloan and Spill Sash um, at like the release party or something of JoJo's song, and I just, I just find it interesting because I'm like, to cover stories about, you know, predators and stuff like that, um, or people that have been accused of things, and even JoJo being in the headlines for, you know, being abusive towards those kids. Um, I think it's really interesting to be going to, um, like, release parties and stuff like that of people that you have to, like, make content on who are, like, bad people. I thought it was really interesting. Y'all, so just to get started, I want to say this immediately, that I do cover a lot of Eugenia Cooney content. And when I first started covering her, I was pointing out the fact that, yeah, she's sick. Yeah, this is something that needs to be addressed, obviously, like something she needs to go and get help for. But I had also called out the fact that there is a lot of toxicity and toxic behavior surrounding Eugenia Cooney. She has been flashing underage people on stream for the longest time now. She has been encouraging certain very toxic behaviors and patterns to her audience and not just that, but the things that she says is very disgusting, vile, and hateful, how she makes fun of other people for being different ethnicities. And I have called out for the longest time and said, I understand she's sick. I understand she's frail. And that's not really the biggest issue that I have with her, though. The issue that I have is the fact that, y'all, she pushes really disgusting, vile things to her very young, underage audience. And I was saying, that needs to stop. We need to call out this toxic behavior. <sighs> So anyways, BJ ended up making a video in response to one that I had talked about saying that Eugenia Cooney needs to be, and she did not take kindly to the things that I had said in the video and made a long rant video about why Eugenia should stay on the platform, not age restricted, why she should be able to just live her best little life. And I'll give BJ the benefit of the doubt because I'm sure she's heard of Eugenia Cooney. I'm sure she's seen the things going around the internet, but I don't think she knows to the extent how toxic it really gets over on Eugenia's community. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt. And I had even commented in the comment section, I was like, hey, like, this goes beyond her being frail. I hope you know that. Like, it's her flashing an underage audience. It's this, that, and the third. And yeah. Her response to that was deplatforming is taking away a, let's be honest, disabled woman's right to speak on the internet and appear in her body. That's what it is. That's what she thinks it is. Now, I understand anorexia can be a disability if the condition it gets to the point where the person is not able to work with it, then it can be a disability. But that's not the case for Eugenia. Eugenia still goes to Disney once a year, twice a year. I, can't, I don't know. She goes quite often. She live streams for hours and hours on end. That is her livelihood. She stated multiple times that she uses online to support herself, the online income. She is not affected by that by any means. What she is doing with her platform is, again making fun of Syrian refugees, making fun of people's accents. She is dogging people for their race. She has made very blatant videos in the past stereotyping the black community, and that really pissed me off. But then to make matters worse, quite literally, as a content creator, you have your demographics where you can go in and see the people who are subscribed to you. You can see the people who watch you, the unique viewers, the non-unique viewers. You can see the age demographics. And again, age demographics, that's something that you can see as a content creator. She was quite literally able to see that a majority of her following, over almost half of her following, was underage, but she was still getting on live streams, faking that she was passing out, faking all types of stupid shit, and she was flashing repeatedly flashing an underage audience oh while wearing santa claus lingerie to show off her disorder 
Again, I was just calling out toxic behavior, but let's get into Dustin's video. Well, there's a few things that I want to talk about before we get into this video, because I know these comments are bound to happen. One, I am absolutely not jealous of any of these people. I couldn't possibly care less about what they have versus what I have. Two, what I'm going to be talking about today is my experience with these people and how I believe what they're doing is very problematic. And three, this is my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. So if you have a differing opinion, you can be respectful when you leave a comment. But if you leave me a nasty comment, it's going to be met with the same energy. So I'm already letting you know off gate. And the fourth and final thing is I anticipate one of these people to react and victimize herself. They'll probably put up a video of a life update and talk about how awful their life has been because one of these people, Sloan, doesn't take too kindly to when people critique him. And there is evidence to support this as well. If she makes another video, this is your warning YouTuber headlines. If you make another video, I will make more videos and I will work with Josh and I will find out your personal information and I will put it out there because you have been talking about so many people on online well not that personal i'll put out your name like i don't release people's addresses because i've had that stuff happen i'm not going to do that but i'm saying i will release your name in your picture just like i did samantha oakley and i'll continue to talk about you I have said this before, if you dox somebody or have an intention to dox somebody, you are a disgusting, vile, and very ignorant person, and you should not have a platform. You should be deplatformed, and I'm not one to call for a deplatforming, but I have in the past, and I will again, because again, if you're a doxer, you do not have the right to be on a community space. That's just my opinion. I think doxing is like a very vile thing that you can do to somebody, especially somebody who does not have their image online, who does not want their image online. This happened to me recently, and I did not take well to it. Y'all, the thing about it, Sloan reports on content creators, just like everybody else reports on content creators, even though he does have a different style to his videos. He's more on like the dark side of exposing like child predators, which again, that's funny that he does that type of content because then... He goes and hangs out with them, how he did to go hang out with JoJo Siwa and Colleen Ballinger was there and then Spill Sesh was there. It was like, what the fuck? And again, Spill Sesh knowing and covering the people who, how she's covered Colleen Ballinger. She knows exactly what the hell she's guilty of. She's covered JoJo Siwa. She's covered James Charles. And now everybody's just buddy, buddy chilling at this album or karma release party like that just doesn't make sense that's quite literally like me after all the coverage i've done of eugenia cuny saying she's a vile ignorant person going to hang out at disney with her and riding rides at the magical kingdom that don't make fucking sense and if you could make it make sense that'd be awesome but you just can't of this situation sorry that was a little bit off, off topic but back to sloan i have seen multiple times where he will dog people dog different creators for them making a video and him not liking the opinion that they have made about him but to go as far as to say you're going to dock somebody, and I don't know if this is the situation that they were referring to, but Sloan once wanted to dox a YouTuber, the YouTuber Headlines channel, and said that he was going to work with the Dad Challenge podcast to dox her information. Y'all, even if you're not putting the address and the phone number out there, the name and the face is damn enough, because obviously if you put the face of somebody out there, they're going to be able to... Google search that image, you're going to be able to find them and get all their information. That is not okay. And the fact that he's like, yeah, I'm going to do this because I don't like your opinion. Sloan, you're sick. Completely transparent here. Lee Page and I did hang out with Sloan and Spill Sesh when we were in LA. It was just a very awkward experience because Spill Sesh was messaging Manny right in front of me talking about her and Sloan having a threesome with him. It kind of caught me off guard because just a few months later, she ended up doing a collab with him. It's not Morgan Adams, it's actually Christy that's been silly. Now back in the day when I was coming up on YouTube, this would never, ever be able to happen. There was all these allegations of payroll and I'm getting paid for this and this person's paying me for that and I'm getting paid for that and Dustin did this and Nick did that. So I am kind of wondering where the keep the same energy crew went because these people are not keeping the same energy. And what's really weird about it is on all of my demographics, on all of my analytics for my channel, all the same people that watch me watch them. So it's just strange to me that Spill Sesh and Sloan can get away with hanging out with Manny MUA, going to JoJo Siwa's music launch and doing all of these things it's just weird if i were to do that i would get dragged to hell in a handbasket now i feel like my channel is pretty chill i don't have a lot of people who hold me to certain double standards or have double standards where they come on this channel and support the content i make and then go to other channels and they're like supporting a different opinion i feel like my channel is fairly calm with that but that's mostly because i only cover certain topics i don't cover such a broad array of things that dustin does but the situation at the end of the day is still kind of the same and I have went through this before not to this extent at all but I understand where he's coming from with this 
I've had people come in my comment section before saying that the things I say are a complete reach, but then we'll go to other YouTubers or YouTubers who are covering the same topics that I am and then really stick in the nail with their side of what they're saying, but then saying I'm just reaching when they come to my comment section, but then we'll go over there and agree when somebody else says it. I don't know. It was weird. I've seen it happen a couple of times. It doesn't happen anymore. Glad we weaved those ones out of the community. And do you guys want to know what really aggravates me about this? Like aggravates me to my soul, to my fucking soul. I've never told anybody this before. I'm just going to tell you guys now. I've passed up some pretty big opportunities that would have probably helped my channel. And one of those is I was asked to edit for Trisha Paytas. And you know, I sat and I thought about that for a very long time internally. I asked people, I asked what their thoughts would be because this would have been something really big for me to have the name Trisha Paytas beside mine with me being her editor. That would have been a huge deal. And ultimately I passed on it because I thought the optics of that situation would be bad. All while we have people like Sloan and Spillsesh hanging out with Manny and Trisha Paytas. So this really gets under my skin because I can't even tweet back to Trisha Paytas without getting hate from the Trishy Land bitches. Now, I really like Dustin Daly's coverage whenever he does topics because it's very opinionated and he keeps it very mild while stating a lot of the facts, but it can get spicy sometimes. And his content of Trisha Paytas isn't bad. Y'all, I've seen way freaking worse of people what they say about Trisha Paytas. Like, I, there's real hate channels that are out there for Trisha Paytas. I feel like the coverage that Dustin does of Trisha is very mild and tame and very entertaining. I really don't see anything wrong with it. But I do think that it is a good idea and was a good idea on his end, even though it would have been huge. And that's sad to see that it's like rolling around his mind like it wasn't a win, but it would have been a win if he would have edited for her because, again, that's a huge name with his being next to it. That could have got him a lot more exposure and a lot more people coming to his channel. Traffic would have been nice, but I think the integrity at the end of the day was what Dustin was really settling with, and I think that's a win, period. But it's completely acceptable for Sloan and Spillsesh to go over there and be on her podcast. Where is the same energy? But this is not my only problem with Sloan specifically. We're going to talk about Spillsesh in a minute. It's the fact for me, and this may be going too far, I don't give a shit, but me, Paige, him, and Christy were all out at this restaurant in LA. I don't even know the name of it because it's not even somewhere that I would want to go. I'm a Denny's kind of girl. I don't need all that extra shit. But we were out to eat, and they ordered all these oysters, probably three or four different things of oysters, and I don't eat that shit. That's gross. So they ordered that. They ordered food. They ordered drinks. Paige and I, I think maybe I had one drink. Paige maybe had two drinks. And our bill would have been like $80. But when the bill comes to the table, they want to split this four different ways. And you can imagine my shock, honey. Me and Paige looked at each other and we were like, no, girl, we are not splitting this. Like we had some chicken wings and some drinks. Y'all had oysters and the whole nine. Like, why would I split that? That was red flag number one. Fuck yeah, that's a red flag. Let me tell y'all about this. I have seen this happen so many damn times, and especially on TikTok, y'all. The bill splitting drama on TikTok is insane sometimes because I've seen people where they're like, yeah, we went to dinner, and there is this one girl, actually, this guy took her on a date, and she expected him to pay for the whole check. He said initially it's what he was going to do until Missy Ma'am sat down and ordered literally i think he said like 50 damn oysters and i'm not paying for 50 oysters how can you even put that down let alone expect somebody to pay for you sitting down and eating 50 oysters this is our first date so when he said no you're going to be covering your side of that she got all pissed off and said she's never going back out with him how disrespectful that was that he wouldn't pick up the tab why would he pick up the tab if he's sitting down and eating two slices of pizza having a little coke with it and you're sitting down drinking fine wines eating 50 oysters no now, I would understand if maybe all four of them went out and they all had the same entree, they all had the same main course meal, they all had the same dessert, and then all had the same beverages and amount of beverages. I would understand if that would be split four ways because then it would be an equal split. But no way in hell should they be expected to pay for all that bullshit if they just had a basic meal and they're out there living their best little extravagant life. I would not have covered that shit either. And I'm glad Dustin's bringing up these little details because I feel like the way that somebody treats people that they're with, like a friend group or just in general, how people act offline, off camera, is their true selves. And I feel like, okay, <laughs> it's going to say a lot. Right. Now, let me back up. That's red flag number two, because when we got to his apartment, he wanted to show us around and he was being very weird. When he showed us around his apartment, he had like his jock strap laying on the bed and he was like, oh, I forgot to put my jock strap away. Like I didn't come to see your apartment. I came to hang out and go to the club. Y'all, I find it cringy whenever people do that. I understand you make a lot of money from online. You do have a nice shirt. You want to show it off. But truthfully, do you think anybody gives a 
flying fuck about this apartment or house tour especially not in person y'all if i would go to some place and like we're just meeting up here because like this is like our meeting spot but we're going to this place i'm not trying to do an apartment tour especially not to see your jock strap now this was around the time that i was making this james charles video that i never ended up finishing and apparently sloan is friends with some people that were included in that and they didn't take too kindly to me including them bj i heard about you going around telling everybody if i talk about you i better come with facts come with facts i'm not bothered or fussed to talk about you bj you are simply not that interesting to me and this whole attitude that you have thinking that you're gonna crack the case with britney spears or you're gonna revolutionize the internet with these investigations that you're doing going to a mason temple girl calm the fuck down i feel like i am gonna be a little bit biased when i say this and this it's only because i never really i've never seen any of her content y'all i really haven't i watched that one video that she made where she used mine mine in the thumbnail and i was like this is gonna be interesting to watch um i watched it i feel like she did make some decent statements in the video um i did agree with some of the things that she was saying but if it was applied to a different situation, not the video that she was covering about Eugenia Cooney, where obviously she was just on the side of everybody else on the inter internet who was like, oh, you can't ban somebody or get them off the platform because they're frail and they have a disability, Missy ma'am. <sighs> That's not the case. You failed to do any type of research, in my opinion, because if you would have looked into Eugenia Cooney, you would have seen that she was flashing hundreds of thousands of people on stream that she's done that for a long time. You would have seen the fact that she stereotypes different races and makes fun of their accents, ethnicities. You would have seen a lot more vile shit than just, oh, poor girl, she's skinny. So, yeah, I haven't watched any of her other content because I feel like if she was failing to do just the most simple research for that one, I don't know what she's going to say in the rest of her content. Even when I left that reply, I had commented on that video. I was like, hey, I agree with a lot of the things that you're saying, but it's not really applied to this situation. Like, it's not like getting a belly button piercing, like you can't discriminate them for the way that they look. It's a lot deeper than that. She has done very vile things on the internet. And she's like, well, deplatforming, it is what it is. Let's call it what it is. You're just trying to deplatform somebody with a disability. It is so much deeper than that. And that is not even the case. <laughs> Y'all here. <laughs> Hearing Dustin Daly's little Southern accent all amped up while he's talking about this because it's like very fueled by certain situations he's went through personally with these people and the hypocrisy like that pisses everybody, literally pisses everybody off, myself included. It's it's amping me a little bit too and making me feel my Southern rage fuel side because I've had, I didn't even know he knew BJ, but that one little interaction I've had with her where it wasn't even really like, I don't know this girl, she don't know me from a crack in the wall. But that kind of showed me what I needed to know about her, that she just felt the way that she felt and it was what it was. And she's not going to take in your side or information to change her opinion or nothing. It's just, it is what it is. But getting back to Sloan, since I already didn't like BJ because there was some shit going on between us, I had changed my number anyway for a different reason, which Sloan had my number because we were in contact at that time. He ended up giving BJ my phone number without my consent. No consent at all. He just straight up gave her my number and she called me and ambushed me on the phone one day. I was high as hell, you guys. And she was trying to come at me saying, well, are you going to talk about me? Because she was worried about what I was going to say about Jake Yancey and Shelby, which really fucking pissed me off too, because now I have her ambushing me because Sloan gave her the opportunity and I felt backed in a corner and it really pissed me the fuck off. Poor Dustin. Sloan is out here literally willing to dox people who just don't agree with him or he don't like their opinion and Dustin thought that he just wouldn't give out his phone number to give out his phone number that is really fucked up that is really fucking sad imagine having a friend and they're just like here I know you're having a little bit of beef with them but take their phone number girl hash it out no you don't give out people's phone number whether you have friends or you are friends with them or you have mutual friends if somebody even a mutual friend asks for that person's phone number you better damn check with that person before you give out that phone number period but let Dustin have been the one to give BJ, say Dustin was the one to give BJ Sloan's phone number. Sloan would have made a video saying, I can't believe this YouTuber did this to me, gave out my personal information, and I just need to take a mental health break from the internet, and I'm going to come back better and stronger than ever. They're just fucking with me, guys really but getting back to sloan now he posted a video back in february i don't remember the exact date i do have a screenshot of it and i didn't download it because i didn't think that he would delete it but he ended up doing it in this video he threw shade at me for shitting on his dreams you want to know why i was shitting on his dreams he was literally looking me in my face saying that he wanted to be the next andy cohen that he wanted to be the next wendy williams that he wanted to be the next barbara walters are you delusional you're a drama channel on youtube and listen you may get a show 
I'm not saying the ratings will be good. He is just so cringe to me, you guys. And if I did half of the shit that he does on a daily basis with his YouTube channel, I would get canceled. Could you imagine if I uploaded a video, Jacqueline Hill, drug-induced bizarre rage, Justin Bieber, bizarre crack addiction, or something like that? Could you imagine what would happen to me? I would get decimated in the comments, but somehow it's okay for him to do that. Oh boy, oh boy, do I agree with Dustin here, y'all. If I was to, if we were to do that shit and upload half of the titles that he was using, he's right. We would be desecrated. We probably would just get cremated on the spot and then have our ashes spread in the sewer because nobody would be in agreement with us doing that. And that's when Sloan started to really rub me the wrong way. Whenever he started making these crazy outlandish titles and doing really reaching for videos and I understand I do some reaching sometimes, but I even say like, y'all, this is just my opinion. I'm kind of like doing a conspiracy here and like, this is just what I'm thinking and it's weird. So I'm going to look into it, but it's different when you're reporting shit as like facts, you know, he just really started to rub me the wrong way. And I really steered away from his content. I actually watched him so heavily for a long time that when I stopped watching his content, it just kept popping up and it was always this bizarre, crazy shit. And I literally had to hit do not recommend this channel to me because I don't want to see it anymore. And it really just annoys me. But something else that annoys me as well is the whole reason I know that I was invited out that night is because Sloan was trying to pull information from me because I had put two and two together on some shit that happened and he wanted to know how I did it. And me being the person that I am, I don't drink. And that night I got completely sloshed. So I would have said anything. To me, this whole thing felt like recon or he was trying to get intel or some information from me or Paige about what might be coming out of my video that I was going to be posting about James Charles because before the night even ended him and Spill Sash had wandered off they didn't say goodbye or anything no goodbye no nothing which I found to be incredibly weird and rude it definitely does sound like that too was trying to be toxic and that little duo decided to go and get Dustin drunk and he said he doesn't drink that often or doesn't really drink I don't know but he was saying that he got sloshed that night and they just kept asking and asking trying to ponder about how he put two and two together maybe they were working on a video about it and they wanted that information or maybe they just wanted to see what he knew period about the situation got him slosh and drunk and then beggared asked all these questions and then whether they got that information or not realized okay we got the information or there's probably like okay look we're not gonna get shit out of him and just wandered off into the night that's weird as shit and i wouldn't that would have been a big red flag for me i would have felt used as fuck and weirded out at the fact that two people got me drunk just to get some information out of me then just wandered off without no goodbye like i thought that they were hanging out not dumb there to get information from dustin and then once they get that information or don't they just take off that's weird as shit now I want to talk about Spill Sesh. And I used to love Spill Sesh. I liked her content. I liked her gig. She was actually very nice to hang out with. But my issue with her is the fact that she's continually buddy-buddy with Manny. And she comes from about the same time period where all of this was going on with the payroll. She has to understand that that makes her look like a hypocrite. And much like the clip where Adam was talking about this, it's so weird to see her out at this JoJo Siwa launch knowing that James Charles and Colleen Ballinger were there. I don't know that she didn't hang out with them. How is there any way for me to know that she's not being biased in the things that she's reporting now because she's become friendly with them. I don't know if she's become friendly with them, but I do know that she said that she used to go to all these parties and she saw all these people. And that's just very, very weird and very creepy. The fact that she was at a party, I believe with Tana Mojo and Tana didn't even know who she was. And she was sitting right there with a the drama channel or the fact that she used to work for TMZ. Like it is extremely weird as fuck on Spill Sessions. And y'all, can you imagine being a faceless drama channel and then going and hanging out with all these people that you report on with them having no freaking idea that you're the person who reports on them nonstop? Up. talking to them giving them some information and them going home and making a video and you're like how the fuck does this person know that like how do they have this photo like what is going on oh that drama channel is literally sitting right next to me on the couch and i had no idea that's weird as shit that's like me being a faceless channel and then going to content creators party with their faces on it and then coming back and posting a video talking about oh this happened here there that this that and the third and they're like how in the fuck does this person know i would feel like my house is bugged or something that would make me so uncomfortable Spill Sash really not disclosing that and the fact that she was a drama channel. She didn't even have to say like, hey, this is my name. She could have just said, hey, I do like drama coverage. I just want to let you know, like, I'm going to feel impelled or compelled to make a video if you say some crazy shit. So just like try to keep it. Just just know who I am. OK, Um, no, she didn't say any of that. She just went. Let it be. 
I find that very distasteful. And I know I didn't just explain that the best way that I could have, but I hope y'all understand what I'm trying to say. Hey, like, could you even imagine? I get dragged and get comments left to me when I read TMZ articles about how awful I am for even giving those people attention. But she used to work for them. What it is and what it will constantly be is rules of thee not for me. There's people out there that will support people no matter what. And there's people out there that will do whatever and they don't care about the repercussions of it. And I don't know if it's just me specifically, but I feel like if Nick were to do the same things that they did or Paige did the same things that they did or even Peter Mon did the same things that they did, we would all get dragged for it. And I don't understand how it is that they've got away with this for so long. How are you reporting on people that are so problematic and then going to hang out with them? If you can make that make sense, that would be great. I watched this video last night and when I heard him say that, I was like, I'm covering this video because I know how to make it make sense. It's all monetary gain. It's all financial gain. It's all status gain when it comes to these people they feel like they're in the loop because I don't know if it's like a power thing or if it's like the dynamic that they want but I've noticed a lot of smaller youtubers not just smaller youtubers but youtubers in general who they'll start covering certain people and say how problematic they are but then they meet that person and they're like oh like it's no longer somebody I cover about I can be friends with this person that'll put me a little bit higher up in power because now I'm friends with the person and they'll start hanging out with the person and it's all for financial gain and monetary gain. It's all for the status of knowing that person. It's all to go to these parties that they go to and do the weird shit that they do. It's literally what it is. And I feel like people start to forget that YouTubers, we are just people. We are just people. And unfortunately, there are some people on this platform who are really shifty. They're really 50-50 with the shit that they do and say because they'll say this and act a certain way online just to get the whole image of it online, just to get that monetary gain of this is the right thing, the right opinion. And then as soon as they're off camera, again, she was an anon anonymous channel for a really long time. But even now that people know her face, she's still going out and hanging out with these people for the financial and monetary gain and for the status of knowing them, I guess. And I've seen this happen so many times. Pray to God I never become one of them. God keep me humble in this journey. I've seen so many times where larger YouTubers will, they'll really come from, everybody starts from somewhere where, you know, they'll struggle to build their channel. Then once they get really big, they start going against the way that they built their platform off of like peace and positivity. And they'll start doing crazy shit just because now they're with other YouTubers who feel like they give them certain power or status so they think they can get away with certain things or start acting shitty because now they have a big following and people will just support them to support them and that's not the case. I just want to wrap this video up by saying I really enjoyed Dustin's video on this so please I'm going to leave him his link in the description box down below feel free to go to his channel and check out this original video because without my jump cuts and like stupid commentary <laughs> he makes it a lot better but with that being said, I just want to say, don't forget that YouTubers are literally just people at the end of the day and they're out there doing stupid shit and making mistakes too. And just because they cover certain things don't mean that that's truly how they feel about that topic at the end of the day, because behind the scenes, they're going against what they talk about in the videos saying, oh, their predators are bad, this, that, and the third. And then they're going to song release parties and hanging out with them. That just does not make sense. Again, that's like me covering Eugenia Cooney saying how vile and toxic she is. And the next thing you know, I'm in Disney and doing live streams with her. That just wouldn't make sense. And then to keep covering the people, I don't know. And again, I feel like that was very telling of Spill Sesh and her personality and her character, period. She should have done that face reveal by herself. She built that channel up anonymously, which at this point, I don't know if she did that, build her channel anonymously if she was in ropes with these people behind the scenes. Who knows how much they had a role in playing the whole building her channel. Maybe Manny was behind the scenes the whole time with Spill Sesh and feeding her bullshit and that's why she covered him the way that she covered him and especially started to lighten up on the things that she would cover about him and her attitude on him maybe he had something to do behind the scenes and that's why she allowed him to do the face reveal and expose her I don't know I feel like they exposed themselves damn doing this whole face reveal but anyways you guys I just wanted to leave off this video by saying content creators are just people you might really like their content and I really like Sloan's content too but at the end of the day if the person is not good the person's just not good. The content may still be good, but it's really important to kind of have an understanding and awareness of who we're watching. Like Eugenia Cooney, a lot of people watch her and just see her for a frail girl, but I'm like, no, there's a lot more to it. And so I report it and cover it. We got to know who these people are that we're watching. You don't have to do a face reveal. I'm not nothing like I am just saying, if you're a toxic person, but trying to cover not toxic content, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to wrap this up, but I hope that you guys understand what I'm trying to say and I'll catch you guys in the next video.